Hi everyone, welcome to my lecture on digital assets. We are going to talk about tokens and coins, but this time not so much from a technical point of view, but more from a legal and business perspective. I am Florian Huber and I have a background as a founder and serial entrepreneur in the internet space who later turned startup investor. I've been doing startup investments in early stage tech companies now for many years. Since last year, I'm the uh, managing partner with Signature Ventures. Uh, Signature Ventures is a venture capital firm focusing on early stage investments in crypto and blockchain startups in Europe and the US as well. In 2017, I launched a website called ChainEurope.org. ChainEurope.org is a directory of all European blockchain startups. We are currently listing more than 700 blockchain startups. So if you want to get a feeling what's going on in the European blockchain space, please feel free to check out the website. So without further ado, let's get started with my lecture on digital assets. Here we go. Um, I did choose a as a key visual for my presentation. I did choose uh, this, uh, the, the casino chips here because sometimes the crypto space does feel a lot like uh, being in a casino. Um, well, let's have a closer look at the outline. What are we going to talk about in this um, this video? Um, we will start with trying to come up with a good definition definition for a token and a coin. In a, in, a, in a blockchain context, we are looking at classification systems for tokens, so for example, utility tokens, security tokens, cryptocurrencies, and so on. And we are going to, uh, and we try to understand the, um, the the very basics and the challenges of token design and uh, token engineering. So, well, um, let me start with a simple question, and the question is: uh, Does every blockchain need a token? The simple answer to that question is no, not every blockchain does, a, uh, does need a token. The more uh, complex answer is here. Um, it's, um, we have to distinguish between so-called permissionless blockchains on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, permissioned uh, blockchains. Uh, permissionless blockchains usually, usually are open public blockchains, and uh, good example or well-known examples are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, um, EOS, um, and so on. On the, on the other hand, on the other hand, we have permissioned blockchain, or so-called enterprise blockchains, consortia blockchains. These blockchains are usually private and closed blockchains, so not everybody can take uh, can take part or can can use the or can access the network. Uh, it's usually restricted uh, to the corporation or to a consortia of uh, of corporations um, for a permissionless blockchain, we do need a token um, as an, an incentive mechanism because we need uh, to incentivize the people in the network to put in the work uh, for, the, for, the, for the consensus. So um, otherwise, if there would be no monetary incentive, um, people wouldn't be willing to put in the work or the energy uh, or, to, to, or to supply the resources for getting the, the consensus within the um, network done. So the, the incentive is solely economic uh, to, to, um, to, get the, um, to get people to do the proof of work or the proof of stake or any other consensus mechanism. Um, for permissioned blockchains, we don't need that kind of, uh, of consensus mechanism. And uh, well, um, the concept of a token and a coin outside the blockchain context is nothing new. It, it has been around for thousands of years. Uh, here are some examples. Uh, things like seashells sea have had the function of tokens and coins. We have had gold coins, casino chips, things like vouchers, or even frequent travel of uh, frequent flyer miles or QR codes uh, could work as a, as a token or as a as a coin, and if you are an, um, a, a native speaker of German, a good translation would be that mark. So uh, I think that's um, that's a good uh, German um, wording here for for token. So let's uh, let's look at the uh, or let's try to come up with a good definition 
of a token in the context of blockchain. And it turns out that this isn't that easy. I did some research on it to find a good, concise, and precise definition of a, of a, of a token. And the best thing I found was in, uh, in the book, uh, Token Economy, um, written by uh, Sherman Voshmir. And um, so um, let's look at, uh, at her um, definition of a, of, of a token. So let's just, uh, here we go. So um, a token is a piece of data which grants an access right and or represents an asset, meaning the value of something, which is collected, collectively governed on a blockchain using smart contracts. So there are four parts to this definition. First of all, it's a piece of data living on, on, on a blockchain, staying on a blockchain. And this piece of data is collectively governed um, by using smart contracts. So a, block, a, a token can have two functions. It can have the function of an access right, an access right to, to use a network uh, like the Ethereum smart contract platform or an access rights to use a decentralized uh, storage network. Uh, this would be the use case of Filecoin or voting rights if it's uh, governance tokens or just simply a, a voucher for all kind, kind of services. But it could all, can also have a, a second fun, uh, function, um, the representation of an asset. So a token can represent the right to some underlying value in the digital or physical world. Best example here is Bitcoin, which represents uh, the value in a, in a digital world. But a token can also represent things like company shares, real estate, or even a piece uh, of art. So that would be the, the use case of so-called security tokens. And, uh, and to, to, to wrap up this definition, I think it's, uh, it's important to understand what a token is not. A token is not a digital file sent from one, wise, from, from one device to the other. When I started out in the crypto space, I always had in mind that when I'm sending uh, my Bitcoin from wallet A to wallet B, there, that uh, there is, uh, there would be the movement of a file from one computer to the another, but it's not uh, the, the the way it works. Uh, the the token always stays and lives on the on the blockchain, and you access uh, or you have the right to access this piece of data by using um, your um, private key um, attached to the uh, to the token. Well, um, now we have talked about uh, tokens, but what about coins? Usually in the crypto space, you always hear both words a lot, Bitcoin, Filecoin, uh, and so on. And uh, on the other hand, and tokens uh, um, as well. So, but what's actually the difference? And um, what, I, what I would like to suggest in terms of the taxonomy is that uh, to, to define a token, to define a coin as a token, uh, which acts like money, so it's something like Bitcoin, Monero, Zcash, uh, and so on. And to use the the and, and to use token as a kind of umbrella term for both for money uh, money tokens for coins and all other tokens uh, as well. And uh, it um, it uh, it looks like that that you have once again you have the umbrella have token as the umbrella term, and then you have money coins or, or money tokens. Uh, coins or cryptocurrencies on the one hand. On the other hand, you have all other tokens, uh, all other uh, kind of all other, uh, sort of uh, utility or sort of security token. And so, well, so what's all the fuss about tokens? Why are tokens cool? Uh, what's, uh, why are tokens uh, important? What can you do with tokens if you look at the, at the big, bigger picture? And I think it's a good way um, to first of all look at once again look at tokens in the old world and in the old world um, every token usually had a centralized issue like in, in the use case of money or for money it's this nation state and banks and corporations for example if you have frequent traveler miles so that's usually a corporation who's issuing and who's governing uh, the, the, the tokens as a centralized issuer. In our new world, uh, this changes because the issuing and the management of token is now happening on an open public infrastructure like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or the, um, the EOS, uh, the EOS uh, blockchain. And it's actually, you don't need a centralized issuer anymore. It, it, it 
can be done by every software developer with some basic uh, software skills to to issue his own um, token on the blockchain. It's uh, it's not that expensive, so it has become from a thing of the state and the banks and the corporations to to uh, to, to a thing everyone can can uh, can do. And in this new world, the tokens enable the easy granting of access right and the easy creation of assets on the blockchain. Once again, here are the two functions of a of a token this uh, this uh, this um, refers to. And I find a quote on the on, on the internet which I liked, which I uh, uh, really liked. It was that tokens are to the web three what websites were to the web one. I think that's that's good on point. And next time someone is asking you, hey, what's actually the killer? application of blockchain technology uh, blockchain technology besides bitcoin uh, i think a good answer is that tokens are the killer app of the of the web3 era to put that in better context let's look back at the history of the commercial internet it all started about 25 years ago first we had the information economy with players like uh, like the Internet Explorer, Netscape, or uh, Yahoo. Then came the platform economy. Economy. It was about social media um, website where um, everyone could uh, become a creator and put its uh, his own content on the web. And now we are moving to the token economy. And uh, the big difference to understand this shift is that. Uh, in the web free uh, era now it's possible to uh, to execute trans transactions directly uh, on the internet so we don't need any intermediaries anymore like uh, like banks or like paypal or visa or mastercard um, to to get a a transaction of value done it can all be done peer to peer and if we go, um, if we get a little bit more abstract, we might ask the question if uh, centralized networks, blockchains, and tokens are going to change the way society is creating uh, value. And uh, in our old world, we are having this traditional top down approach when it comes to um, organizing uh, or, or, or setting up organizations. We have this. Uh, this uh, this typical hierarchy where some people are on on the top and other people are on the on the bottom. But in the new world, um, we have token economies um, which will en enable so-called decentralized autonomous organization. Let me explain that by using by using an an example. Uh, on the on the left here, um, we have the example of BMW, the famous Bavarian car maker. On the right, we have Ethereum, the, the decentralized network um, of a, a smart contract platform. BMW was founded in 1916. The Ethereum network launched in 2014. Um, both uh, both organizations have a similar market capitalization. Ethereum, it's, uh, as of today, it's around about 38 billion. The market cap of BMW says 40 billion, so quite, quite similar here. So both organizations uh, created sort of an equal value. Uh, in the case of Ethereum, even much faster than, than, than BMW, but that's another story. And, uh, but the, the, the way the organizations are, uh, are, are set up is very different. Uh, in the uh, for BMW, it's this typical top-down organization. You have the CEO at the top, and the, at the bottom there are the workers uh, assembling the cars in the in, in, in the factories. It's uh, one legal entity organized by by employment contracts. On the other hand, you have Ethereum, uh, decentralized, autonomy, uh, autonomous organization, uh, no centralized uh, legal entity, no employment contracts. It's different different uh, people and different stakeholders uh, working together in a decentralized um, network. And I think that's quite, uh, quite fascinating to see that in the long run, how uh, blockchain and tokens and decentralized networks uh, could uh, change the, the way our society is creating value. Let's now move on to, uh, to token frameworks, to token classification systems. A, a very well-known classification systems is the 
the more legal point of view and to differentiate between utility tokens, security tokens, currency tokens, utility tokens are usually best described as a, as a sort of a prepaid voucher to access a network or to access a service. Uh, service security tokens are tokens uh, that behave like a security. Security meaning here in this context, uh, like a, to use the German word Wertpapier. So as in German, we have, uh, we have security kind of both meanings. So security tokens refer to, 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 to Wertpapier and the security token can represent a, a real estate on the blockchain or can represent company shares or, or a piece of arts. And on the, on the right, we have the, 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 the coins, the money tokens, the, the cryptocurrencies like, like Bitcoin, um, Ethereum, Monero, Ripple, uh, uh, tokens which act like uh, like money. We can even go a little bit deeper and uh, look at different subcategories. Once again, we have the the currency tokens here, the utility tokens, the security tokens, and uh, uh, currency tokens uh, can be a, a store of value. Famous examples: Bitcoin, and we have stable coins like Dai, Tether, USDC, Facebook, Libra, and also we have um, uh, payment. Uh, uh, simple payment tokens like uh, like Ripple and if utility tokens subcategories here can be governance tokens. So it's, uh, if you are into DeFi and yield fa farming, you know what I'm talking about. If things like discount tokens, work tokens, and can can up with, uh, with even more subcategories uh, for it. Um, we, we can. Um, that was the more the. The, the the legal perspective in terms of the classification systems we can uh, look at uh, at another at other properties of tokens and uh, there are um, there are in space there are so called fungible tokens and non fungible tokens nfts and nfts have become quite popular Recently, there's a lot of hype going on in the crypto space of uh, crypto art and crypto gaming and uh, and digital gaming items. And I want you to understand that the, that the difference between a fungible token and a non-fungible token is simply that fungible tokens are interchangeable. Non-fungible non tokens are unique. Every token is unique. It's not interchangeable. It comes with a individual specification. And uh, there is a fungible token. Uh, each individual token or, or the fraction of a token is equivalent to the next. So it's interchangeable. And uh, pretty much all tokens out there are fungible tokens. It's like Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, Tether, Filecoin, Ocean, Yearn, uh, all um, um, all uh, these kind of tokens, um, but NFTs are getting more and more popular. And uh, when it comes to to things like crypto collectibles and crypto crypto uh, crypto collectibles and uh, crypto gaming, and I, I would like to make it a little bit more uh, more specific, specific. Just last week, just last week, uh, there was headline news that the famous uh, French uh, French soccer club uh, PSG now was a selling issue in digital collectible cards of past and present famous soccer players like Neymar or David, David Beckham. And these digital collectible cards are based on NFTs, which uh, run on, on top of the Ethereum uh, blockchain. Um, this year, um, I would like to show you um, the most uh, popular or the most visited website in the blockchain space, it's CoinMarketCap. It's uh, basically a list of tokens showing the real-time prices and it's, uh, it shows all uh, publicly traded uh, tokens, uh, meaning tokens are traded on, on exchanges. And uh, currently CoinMarketCap is listing more than 7,200 7, publicly traded uh, tokens. Um, let's, uh, let's move on to some basics on token engineering and token design. We have seen that creating a token, issuing a token is actually quite simple. It can be pretty much by, done by everyone. You have to pay some, some network fees to, to issue your token. So it's, uh, it's actually quite easy to set up the token but what's the challenge and what's quite hard is to get the design of the token right to get the token engineering 
right uh, and to make the token successful and actually create uh, create value and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, just just a couple of keywords here what to consider when thinking about uh, the token design or the token engineering first you have to decide on the purpose of the token does it represent does it uh, is, is it an exit right or does it uh, represent an asset on the blockchain or is it both then you have to think about the properties of the token you have been talking about fungible non-fungible tokens uh, there are native tokens out there base layer tokens or second layer tokens um, usually tokens uh, based on or most of the second layer tokens are ERC20 tokens based on the Ethereum uh, blockchain you have to answer the question how to connect the blockchain to the to the physical world how to get uh, data from the outside world in a proper way uh, onto the blockchain. That's the whole complex of oracles. We unfortunately don't have time to get into it. Then there are the question of the, the right governance rules for your decentralized network and the consensus mechanism, whether to use proof of work or proof of stake or another um, form of consensus mechanism. And uh, last but not least, there is uh, the, the question of uh, the incentive system. It can be, for example, the case of Bitcoin can be block mining rewards and transaction fees or the token price itself, which in the long run goes up or not, or some sort of punish, punishment. These are all just some keywords to consider when thinking about, uh, about token uh, engineering. And you could sum up that uh, token engineering is about creating many economies and in, in written code and the users come to, come to these mini economies to engage in a in mutually beneficial interactions with others and uh, they rely on the platform contracts marketplaces currencies and rules of decision making and government uh, so it's uh, actually that's the hard thing in the block, uh, blockchain space so it's not once again it's not so much about just issuing the token creating the token but getting the design of the um, token right well that's it for today in my upcoming live lecture we are also going to talk about icos initial coin offerings decentralized finance and we are looking at digital wallets so i'm really looking forward to seeing you all at my upcoming live lecture thank you